Then Marva. Oh, this is this is Latasha. How are you? Hi, Alvin Marsha. I'm fine. How are you, Latasha? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Very good. Thanks. So it is, <clears throat> so it's 6.30 and we are going to go ahead and um, I am going to be doing prayer and then Bible study for tonight. We'll be doing the second church, um, Smyrna. So at this time, if there's any prayer requests, um, I would ask either that you say them audibly or if you wanted to put them in chat, that would be fine. Um, I just want to make sure that we capture all of those prayer requests before we begin prayer. Yes, <clears throat> I'd like to have a prayer request for my uh, nephews in Denver, Colorado. My sister-in-law, Sue, passed away two days ago from the uh, aneurysm. So just keep my nephews in prayer. Okay, no problem, thank you. Any other prayer requests? Yes, continuing to keep um, Dr. Celeste Chisholm Owens and her family in prayer as well as my family as they continue preparing for the home going celebration for my cousin. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and pray. And then if there's any other that come in, you can either audibly say them or you can put them in the chat. So dear God, we thank you tonight, Lord. Um, God, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you, God, for giving us another day to be in your presence, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now that you say in your word that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in the midst. And so, Heavenly Father, right now, we know that you're here. God, we know that you are a healer. God, we know that you are a peacekeeper. And so, God, specifically, we pray now for Deacon Blue's nephews who are in Denver, who are right now um, just in a pro in a process of just being there, be comforted right now that you give them the the angel of peace as they are preparing um, as their um, as there was death in their family, Lord. And dear Father, God, um, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the Chisholm Owens family, God. Um, I pray for them right now as they are dealing with the situations in their family, Lord. Um, I don't know all of the specifics, but God, I just pray and we lift them up in prayer, God. We know that in times like this, we really need people around us to just pray your word, God. God, we know that it says in your words that you are a redeemer, God, that you are a restorer. And so, God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you give these families all the things they need to come for one another to know that you do not make any mistakes, God. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I also pray. We also pray um, for Selena's family and, and um, Shannon, the, the Carter family right now as they are preparing for um, the celebration of life for their cousin, their brother, um, their son, Lord. We know that it never makes sense sometimes why things happen, but God, we know that you don't make any mistakes, Father God. Lord God, right now, I pray God, I pray for your wisdom right now, Lord. I pray for your wisdom as we are about to go into this teaching, Lord. And I want to say, God, right now, I'm so nervous, but Lord, I'm trusting you, God. Um, I know that you say in your word that if we just, if we trust you, that we, that nothing is impossible for you, God. God, we know that you can help na navigate any situation if there's less of us and more of you, God. And so, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we come together, Lord, knowing that the power of your word is more powerful than anything that we could ever need, Lord. Not our way, but your way, God. God, I pray now, even as we comfort one another in prayers, Lord, that we pray the prayers that are connected to the promises not the problems and the pains in this world, Lord. God, I know that it may seem like it is sad right now, but Lord God, for all of those who know who you are, God, this is a place where there will be no more sorrow. There'll be no more pain, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anyone that is dealing with any physical ailments, God, we know that in your word, it says by your stripes, we are healed. And so God, I pray that we believe what you say in your word, that we will do greater things, Lord, that we understand that, you know, that uh, through our words, the life and death, power of life and death is through the tongue. And so, Lord, I pray that we understand that it's not just our words, but sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. We don't know what context to put it in, Father God. Sometimes, Lord, right now, we just know that we need this little unction and the, the moaning and the groaning, God, and the Holy Spirit can come in and just consume the atmosphere, Lord. And so, God, right now, I'm praying for your anointing to come 
come into this place, Father God, to come into this place, Father God, right now. Father God, I pray that the Holy Ghost just takes over, God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I pray that there's anyone who didn't even ask for a prayer request, but they are suffering in silence, God. I pray that you remind them that you are a sovereign God who knows all, that you are the Alpha and Omega God. God, you are everything that we ever need, Lord. Sometimes in this world, it seems like we are struggling with things, God, and it's only because we don't trust all the power that you give us when we tap into the Holy Ghost power and anointing, God, that it's not by our strength, but in our weakness, you are made strong, dear God. Dear Lord, I pray that if we do not have the relationships that can speak life into our lives, God, I pray that you help us to navigate even those things, God, that you give us the wisdom and to understand that any that you can use anybody in any situation to show light, God, if they speak the word of God. And Lord, I pray that we'll have the discernment that even in those times where we feel like we are distressed and stressed out and we don't know what to do, God, I pray that we realize that your word is simple, Lord, that it doesn't have to be complicated, Lord, that we can just trust in you, God, and that if our hearts are pure, God, that you will get the glory in Jesus' name. God, I pray right now in this place, Lord, I pray that the anointing comes in father god and sometimes we don't know what anything else to say but to cry out the name jesus and so lord we just say jesus 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 hallelujah is the highest praise and god we just say hallelujah we thank you god we thank you for coming into this space and coming into this atmosphere god and giving us all that we need lord not by our strength but by your word god Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are not even on this prayer line right now, but just need a special blessing in this time. God, we are entering into the holiday season and it can bring such sorrow and sadness, God. But I pray that they will realize that, God, that you, again, are here as our comforter, Lord, that you can anoint us and just give us the, the joy and the peace that we can't even pay for, God, that we can understand that by being connected to you, that peace beyond all understanding can give us that joy, that joy no matter matter what our circumstances, dear God. And so, Lord, I just pray right now, God. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray that you just come into this place, God. Transform us, Lord. Help us to understand, God, that with you, we can do all things, God. Dear God, for those of us who have had these, these visions and these promises, and we're asking God, Lord, when is it going to happen for me, God? I pray that whatever they need immediately, God, that you can restore them, that you can and show them the scripture that lines up with something that you showed them in their lives, God, knowing that you had a plan for us before we were even formed in our, in our mother's bellies, God. And no matter what the situation and the circumstances, we know that even if it looks like it is a situation that is impossible, God, that it is impossible, God, I pray that we don't even try to do it in our natural strength, God, that you have favor that you show us, Lord, that we go to places with a kingdom mindset, knowing that as we walk into the things and we, we navigate through situations, Lord, that it is not by our power, but it's that Holy Ghost power, God, that Holy Ghost power, Lord, God, that Holy Ghost power, Lord, that can just change things and turn them around. And Lord, right now, I'm asking you, God, I'm asking you to come into this space, Lord, come into a space where I've never been before, God, to give me the courage and the confidence and the voice that you can use us all as a vessel, God, that the words that you are showing us in this teaching today to help us understand how do we go forward when we're in a place where there's so much darkness, so much chaos, and it looks like the people who are of this world are winning, God, but really, we know that they are not winning, God. The only ones who are winning, God, are those who are, who are locked in step with you, Lord. And so, God, as we go into this teaching today to understand what do we do when we are faced with persecution, God, and what does that persecution look like? It looks like we seem like we're trying to do everything right, God, but everything seems to go wrong. But if we could just trust in you, God, we can just press into your word, God, that we can just feel that anointing, God, that we can just raise our hands and say, hallelujah, God, that we can trust you and know that no weapons formed against us shall prosper, God, that you are just that everything Everything that we need, Lord God, everything we need, Lord God, everything that we need, Lord God, I pray right now, God, that you come into this space, that there's so little of us, God, that you are glory, that we are the light and salt that you call us to be, God, that we stop, stop shrinking in circumstances when we know what the gospel says in situations that seem like they are hopeless, God, that you give us that hope, God, and not because, again, not the, because of what we did, but because your son died on the cross, Lord, and the blood that shed all for all of our sins, God, it gives us 
this, this way of, we have this freedom in you, Lord. And so God, Father God, in the name of Jesus right now, Again, I pray for all of those who have made a special prayer request tonight, that those requests are heard, acknowledged, and responded to, God, that you give every person that made that request the wisdom to know how to support the people that are connected to the prayer request that they gave tonight, God, so that they know that um, they're not just going in their own strength, God, but they're going in a way with the spiritual way, God, and doing things in ways that you are glorified and magnified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Um, I don't know if there's any additional prayer requests. I didn't even know I was going to get this emotional as I was praying, but I'm going to ask tonight that y'all have patience with me. Um, I'm going to have my little honesty moment. I probably shouldn't do this before I go into a teaching, um, but I'm going to be honest because I'm going to ask for y'all as I'm teaching in real time for those who will pray with me as we are explaining and going through the word of God. We serve a father um, who is so amazing and he can do so many things through the word of God. And sometimes we have fear and we have fear about things and God will position us so that we are put into a place where we are uh, forced to face the things so that we can be blessed. Amen. And so as we go into this teaching, I ask you again to be patient with me. Um, if there's any correction or any words that I'm saying wrong, just have patience. Know that the intention of my heart, I have prayed, I have prepared, I have done all the things and now I just want God to have his way in Jesus name. Um, so if you could just let me know that you can see the screen okay for the title slide that would be awesome and then i'm yes. going to go right into this teaching thank you so much deacon blue and so tonight we're going to be talking about the church of smyrna this is the second letter um that john wrote and so when we talk about this particular, this letter or the Church of Smyrna, I want to begin with some background information. And so as we go into this background information, one of the things that I thought was really cool, and I said, God, you are so gracious to me. Um, this is actually the shortest letter. Um, this is the shortest letter that was written. And the location of Smyrna was about 25 to 35 miles north of Ephesus. And so last week we spoke, or Pastor Shannon spoke on the letter that was written to Ephesus. And um, if you can see here from the slide that Ephesus was kind of in rivalry with Smyrna because they had this grandeur or influence at the time. There were so many things that were happening. And it was, again, this letter was the shortest of the letters. And this particular, um, this particular area or region was known for beauty, wealth, and achievement. And so what I want you to know is that when we look at this particular um, letter, this was one of the two letters that did not have any rebuke or criticism at all. It was literally on um, the context of being a letter of encouragement. And as we go into this teaching further, you will understand why there was encouragement there. And so what I wanna do next is I wanna go, um, oh, I wanna say a little bit more about the background too. Um, Smyrna was named after the main commercial product, Mer. And I thought it was important to bring up this particular product because this product means bitter, but it was also an ointment that was used when people passed away. And so I thought that that was really interesting that this city or this region was named after that. And back when the, the seven churches where this letter was written, it was known as Asia Minor, but this is now known as modern Izmir, Turkey. And so one of the cool things about Smyrna is this is a city that still exists um, in modern day. You can actually go visit it in real time and see what we're talking about. And I don't know if you've ever been to Europe, but one of the things that's really neat about going um, to Italy or going to Europe is you'll see how young America is because when you are in Europe, you start to see places and, and you're in places where Jesus was and the disciples were and the apostles were. And it's really, really, it, it's really a cool experience. And so if you've ever, never been overseas, it would be great to go there. But when we look at this particular region, something that was important to keep in mind is that it was a, a, a region where only the only people that the emperor would worship was widespread, meaning that if you were a Christian, that was not popular. It was the center of idol worship, pagan temples, and pagan and a temple to a Roman emperor. And so that was the background of Smyrna. And so what I want to do now is let's look, go ahead and read the text in its fullness. And then I want to break it down um, a scripture by scripture. 
And so let's go ahead and read Revelations 2, 8 through 11. I'm reading the King James Version or translation. And it says, And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but our synagogues of Satan, fear none of those things which thou art suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And so when we look at this text, if you're not familiar like me, I don't, I, I will read the King James Version, but I will often go to other translations, whether it's NIV or the Amplified or the Message ver Version of the text so that I can understand it. But I want us to break down this particular text. And so we're going to be referencing the King James Version version, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to break it down and just talk about some of the information that's there. So like I always do, even when I'm preaching or I'm teaching, I always like to start with a big idea because some people may not hang around. They might say, you know what? I'm done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and so the big idea or the purpose of this letter is it is an encouragement to people as they are faced with persecution. And so if you are a person that is in your life, you're saying to yourself, it feels like I'm consistently being persecuted. It feels like I'm always being misunderstood or I'm an outcast wherever I am. I feel like I'm peculiar. Well, one thing I want you to know is that you should feel a little awkward sometimes because we are in this world, but not of this world. And so this particular um, passage or this letter can encourage you today to know what types of things are connected to you when you walk in faith, when it feels like you are crowded and surrounded in environments of persecution, or it feels like people could be picking on you or making you feel some kind of way because you have chosen to walk the way of the Lord. So let's go ahead and break down this particular text. Um, as uh, Pastor Shannon talked about last week, most of the letters have a certain um, rhythm that they go through. This one has a couple of pieces that are missing. So I'm going to follow that, 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 that flow, but there will be some, it'll be a little bit different just because again, of the, con the way that this particular letter was constructed. And so the salutation says, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. And again, as a reminder from last week, when we're using the salutation is to the leader of that particular church. And so that is all that the salutation means. Now let's go ahead and jump into more of the meat of it. So um, we were in Revelations 2 and 8, but then I like to say it's 2, 8, B, because this is the same part of the same sentence. But it says, these things say it the first and the last, which is dead and is alive. Now I have some key points that are summaries, but I want to read a little bit more about this particular information. So the first thing is that when we're talking about these letters, these are Jesus speaking to these churches through these letters that were actually written by John. But in this particular letter, um, it was really, there was some symbolism happening in that region because Smyrna itself, it actually had died. So it, and so again, I always like to say this because for me, sometimes I'm looking at things and we are, um, when you're looking at things BC, it seems like it's backwards, but this city had what they call died, but had been destroyed in 600 BC, but it was magnificently restored in 290 BC and it still exists today. It was the home to the goddess Roma, because as we mentioned before, there was a lot of pagan gods, there was a lot of idols. And so if you look to the right on this slide, that was a coin that represented Roma. And that was, again, a goddess of that era. But again, as Christians, we didn't follow that. But when we look at this portion of the text, it reminds us, and again, it's symbolism, or it is a reflection saying Jesus conquers sin and death, so that we will get victory over sin and death. So when it's talking about these things say at the first and the last which was dead and is alive it is a symbolism of Jesus because Jesus defeated sin and Jesus also defeated death Jesus rose from the dead and he and he killed death in doing so so when we look at this portion of past the passage it's important that we keep in mind 
that again, when it talks about the first and the last, which is dead and which is alive, again, it is reflecting on when Jesus died and rose for our sins. And so if we are kingdom focused and if we have accepted Jesus into our hearts, we have to remind ourselves that again, because Jesus died, um, our, et our eternity is never to death again. And so again, when we look at this particular piece, I'm just looking at my notes here real quick. It says Jesus himself, Jesus gives himself the title with each message to the church. He appeals to some specific authority about himself. And again, in this particular text, when he's saying the first and the last, it is who is dead is who to come. It says first, Jesus describes himself as the one who is eternal. He is eternal. And so that is important for us to keep in mind as we think about this particular piece. And then and if we looked at a principle, it says Jesus conquered sin and death so that we will get the victory over sin and death. We do not have to pay for our sins because Jesus did all the suffering necessary for our sins. And isn't that just one of the most beautiful things about being a believer is knowing that his grace is sufficient because when he died and he raised, he, he rose from the dead. That is what is captured in this particular piece. So let's go to the next portion of, of, of the text. And this is the commendation. It says in the ninth verse, it says, I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. And again, the key point here is for those who walk faithfully with the Lord, they should expect persecution. We can be rich without wealth. Now, I want to just say a little sidebar here because I know we are teaching, but I was just having this conversation earlier with a woman whom I remember there was a time in my life where I would look for, um, I don't want to say approval of man, but I guess approval as a business person. And I would always say, you know what, I, I, I want to have this certain amount of gross revenue or make this much money, and that would represent success. And honestly, if I had to be really honest with you guys, I thought, this year when I turned 50, there was going to be some monetary gain for my business in a different way that was amplified. But I want to tell you something about God when I looked at this text and how it just blew me away because I feel like I'm experiencing it. When we talk about, I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. Could you imagine every single day being in a community where you were less than, like people just didn't respect you. Like you, you could couldn't get the best of anything because you believe something that was a contradiction to the culture and the place where you resided. And that was the situation for people who are believers. Um, again, when we look at this particular text, it says Jesus knows the tribulations that the Smyrna church faced, but it means it meant pressure. It meant distress. Tribulation is anything that oppresses or crushes the soul. He knew everything about the anguish that they encountered. And he noticed that all the heartaches Christians go through, notably Jesus does not rebuke any of these sufferings for Christians. And so if you are a person who's sitting there saying to yourself, I am in this place where it feels like maybe I don't have the things of this world, but you can have a place of richness. Well, I want to go back to the story I was just sharing. I was explaining to them that I said, you know what? My bank account may not have this much, but you know what I know? The more that I love God, I know I'm going to be persecuted. I know that there's going to be people who are going to say things that are contradicting to what I believe and how I'm walking out my life. But I understand that when God gives me peace, that the joy and the things that I have, it makes me feel rich. And so the key point for this particular area says those who faithfully walk with the Lord should expect persecution. It doesn't mean that we expect bad things, but we can't expect for our lives to be all the roses just because I've accepted Jesus into my life. Nothing wrong is going to happen. No, no, no. It's just the opposite. And so just like this church in Smyrna, where you had believers who felt like they were the least of and weren't getting things and they were constantly being persecuted. 
executed. They had a peace and they were rich in spirit because why? They had eternal wealth, meaning that they were no longer going to be, they, they weren't going to die. Their bodies may have go, gone into a different transition, but their souls were going to be wealthy. Mindset is a state of, wealth is a state of mind. I don't know if you see people who are really, really rich and yet it seems like everything is good and it seems like everything is right. Yet when you look at their lives, they're miserable. And so when we look at this, it's saying that Jesus recognize it, recognizes what that looks like. But what I also love is it says in this community church, they endured extreme poverty. They were beggarly and destitute. They may have had poverty. They may have been due to their, their circumstances. However, they were rich because their stance and their position with Christ. They lived in a prosperous city, yet it seems like they were objects of poverty. Yet because the Lord loved them, they could have that peace. And so when we look at this text and we say that Jesus recognizes that just like the Smyrna church was being persecuted, Jesus recognizes that many of us may feel like we are in a position of being persecuted. But what we choose to believe as we look at the, the promises in the word of God and we look at what he is, what why we say yes to him and his grace, we need to understand that right here in earth, it may look one way, but in the heavenly realm and in the spiritual space, we are rich. And I know for me, I know that my bank account may not say some things, but I understand the context of this. And so now I'm in a space and I hope that all of you are, are striving to be in a space where you feel that you're rich, not rich in things, but rich in spirit because you are connected to a one who controls it all. But we have to recognize he realizes and sees everything that we're going through. But what are you turning to in your times of persecution? Are you turning to the world? Are, are you turning to the word? And so again, as we look at this and we look at this text, it says, I know the blasphemy of them that say we are, that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan, meaning that again, they were people who were, they were Christians, they were believers. And again, the Jews, the Jewish people at that time may have made them feel like less than and they're coming and going in the natural, but they knew something that was different. And that's really important to keep in mind, again, as we are navigating through our faith and walking out our ways um, with the Lord. And so let's go to this next piece. And this is another piece that, you know, I, I loved it when I read it because it was the appeal portion of the scripture. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulations 10 days, but thou faithful, un, but faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. And the key point for this area, it just got me so excited for Jesus. It really did. Because it says when trials comes, it strips us of superficial support systems. Instead of leaning on the grace of God's provision, we lean on self. That will not sustain us in a time of trial. Only by committing our souls to a faithful creator, we can cope with the trial appropriately. And when we look at this text even more, it says some shall be cast into prison. And then it says there a little bit further, tribulation for 10 days. One of the reasons that I love that it calls out 10 days as I was studying this text, it says that what that means is, is that trouble ain't gonna last always. That there is a time frame that will be connected to our suffering. Now, I don't wanna make us think that everyone would have been healed during that time as they went through those trials and tribulations tribulations, some people, and we have to ask ourselves, do I, do I love you, Lord, enough that I will surrender my life? Do I love you enough that I would surrender my life? Because if I'm willing to surrender my life, this body here on earth, I have to know that there is a crown of life waiting for me. And so again, if you are looking at, you know, if you look at some of the apostles and you look at some of the texts and you look at how they walk with Jesus and they continue to spread the gospel, even when Jesus had, had, had been crucified and came back in a different form, they recognized that they were, they were walking this out even 
even if it costs them their lives. And so the question that I have for you today is when we think about Jesus promising us victory and life um, that's, that's forever and eternal, would you be willing to sacrifice your life for something that you believe in? And I think that, you know, one of the things as Americans in the Western culture, we can often take this for granted because there are still places in the world that you could be killed for what you believe in. We don't happen to live in one collectively. There might be areas and pockets in the U.S. that if you walk out your faith strongly, that there might be some repercussions. Like if you um, are in certain spaces and you speak out on your faith, you could lose your job or you could be, maybe be demoted or something could happen to you. But losing your life is not something that many of us are accustomed to. And so the challenge and the things that I want to ask you about when you're thinking about your walk, when you're thinking about your relationship with Christ, do you love him enough that you would actually not be afraid to know that it could cost me my life for what I believe in? And so this is another piece when I was studying this, it says this, it says the devil puts us to the test as well as God. He will assay the, um, the metal of our soul to prove whether we are what we say we are. Are we willing to say like what we say when we're placed in trials and tribulations? Will we walk out our faith or will we will in retreat? Will we really say, you know what, this is what I believe in. Um, I will live and I will die for this. Or can I understand that when trials and tribulations, I go right to the word. And again, I was sharing this with us on Sunday, and I want to reaffirm the importance of community, the importance of studying the word of God, the importance of connecting with people who are kingdom believers, because when you are in these trials and tribulations, I know sometimes we, I think it's interesting because I know I have to even catch myself sometimes, but what is your first thing when you think you're facing something that you're afraid of? Is your first thing to go into the word of God and say, no, I know my God is with me. I know that my God is with me. I know he is with me. There is nothing that the enemy can put in me. I mean, would God trust you with that assignment like he did brother Job when he said you could do everything but kill him and Job still believed. He still believed. He still believed when, when death was around him, when it seemed like everything was taken from him. Ask yourself, how do you do with things when you're faced with adversity as we are talking about here? Because again, that is the purpose of this. And then even as we go into the word, and I actually, I thought I had pulled the scripture up. It says, I am tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. And that's James 1, 12 and 13. So when we look at situations where it looks like, you know, um, we're in situations where it's like, oh, this is a test and trial. Know that when we are going through things, we really need to connect to what we say we believe in. And again, one of the things that I love about God is that he knows every single one of us. I know sometimes people will reference others and say, do you have a high pain tolerance? And they'll say, well, God knows that you have a high um, trial tolerance. We'll call it that. And so then that way, when we look at things from that context, we know that um, God will be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us, that he is there and that he knows how much we can bear of it and that he will give us that peace even through the process if we press into him. So again, it says, fear none of those things that thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. Ye shall have tribulations 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Isn't that what we want? Amen. We want to know that we are, we are striving and we are pressing towards that crown of life that crown of life for us. And so let's go to the last portion of this particular text. And this is Revelations 2 and 11. And this is the promise. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirits say unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And the key point here is, oh my gosh, I didn't even, wait, I didn't change this one. So I apologize. Let me go into my, my text, into my other notes here. I apologize for that. Be patient with me, please, people. Hold on. Okay, so the key point for this one that we want to keep in mind is Christians are exempt from 
the second death. We are exempt from the second death. And so when we, again, it says we can be rich without wealth. Um, those who faithfully walk with the Lord shall expect persecution. But the more important part for this part of the text is, is that Christian is exempt from the second death. And what that means is, is that for non-Christians, this is why our witness and our walk is so important, y'all, that we are witnessing to people. Because if they don't accept Jesus Christ into their lives, they're going to be cast into the a fiery pit of hell for eternity, for eternity. And I don't care how much you might say that you like someone or you don't like someone. Would you want anyone to suffer for eternity when you had an opportunity to tell them that they could accept Jesus into their lives and that they could overcome and they could not have that second death? Um, for those of us who have people who have passed away, that they know who knew who Jesus was, isn't it nice that there's going to be a sweet reunion one day? But it will be a tragedy if you didn't take that act of faith to go ahead and say to someone, I want to make sure that I can connect with people and tell them about who God is. And it says Christians who die in serving the Lord know a victory that others do not know because death releases them from the hurt of tribulation. They base their victory in the present of their understanding of the future. The Holy Spirit points those who have faced death eternally, those who give their lives for Christ, who are positive towards God, have an ear to hear, keep the eternal values in view. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. There are two deaths in person that can that a person can experience, the physical and the spiritual. Our passage deals with the spiritual death, which is eternal death. We die first physically, we will second death is a spiritual death for eternity. If we do not receive Jesus Christ as our savior, the book of Revelations refers to the second death four times. So again, if we are if you do not know who Jesus is when you die, then you will not have that eternal life. It will be a tragedy that you don't have the courage to have the a confident conversation with someone to tell them about this. And so then this is the last piece that I want to share tonight. It says once a person becomes a Christian, nothing can separate them from God. And so I know Sometimes people will ask this question. They'll say they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior and they'll say, but then they went away, but they took that opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So the good news is for those who have done that, it says once a person has accepted Christ as their savior, nothing can separate him from God. And that's good news for some of us who have people in our lives that we feel they've accepted Jesus into their lives and they strayed away. The good news is once that person has become a Christian, nothing can separate them from God. And then it says here in Romans 8, 38 and 39, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things that present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us. Oh, that's so powerful. Separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so that is so important that we keep these things in mind as we look at this text. And we're reminded of the encouragement that we get when we look at the book of Revelations. I need to be honest as I'm summarizing and I'm finishing up. I know I'm pretty early compared to how um, normal teachers are, but I was terrified. I have to be honest. I was was more nervous today to teach this lesson because it's such a huge reference to share the gospel and the word of God. And so I want to leave with these few things for anyone that might be watching and are not clear about where their soul is, and they're not clear about if they've accepted Jesus Christ into their heart. I want to encourage you to get that thing right. Um, we want to take an opportunity for you to receive Jesus into your life because we know once you just say yes, one of the things I love about our faith walk is it's not complicated. There's not a lot of legalistic loopholes that you got to jump through and skip through in order to receive salvation. That's not the God we serve. He was gracious enough to send his son down to die for our sins. And so I love that this is what he has done for us. And so in summary, um, I just want to share these last pieces. Just like Smyrna, we must maintain our faith in times of persecution, personally, professionally, or culturally. And we definitely 
definitely live right now in a time where we are being persecuted because of what we believe in. If we are walking in a way where we believe that the word of God is true, it's unadulteratedly true, it is true, 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 we will be persecuted for that. And so we need to make sure that we're not just saying those words, but we're walking out our faith in times of persecution that we are living in right now. And then secondly, after accepting Jesus as our personal savior, we are safe and our souls will always remain in the comfort and care of God. And then again, this brings us to this thing that we can say with confidence. When we know that we are being persecuted, that is when for me, after reading this passage and teaching and studying on it, it gave a whole new meaning to no weapons formed against me shall prosper because I now know that my God, he can do all things if I just obey him. And then how do we get to the place where we can really live out our lives, where we are connected to the kingdom focus and do things in a way that we can honor and reverence the things that are in the word of God? Because I was blessed by studying this today. So I want to thank you, Pastor Carter, both of you for giving me the opportunity to study this because I had to face one of my fears, which it actually talked about. And I realized that, you know what, if we are reading the word daily, we can't pick and choose what part of the gospel we want to read. We need to take time to read it all. Why? Because that is the way that we get closer and our walk is stronger. When we read the word of God, we believe the word of God and we behave like we believe in our coming and going, knowing that we serve a God who is available and ready to be available to us at any time, as long as we say yes and amen to what the word of God says. So I just want to close in a word of prayer really quickly, and then I'm going to turn it over um, to Pastor Carter. So Father God, we thank you today, Lord, for giving us the blessings of the book of Revelations, knowing that our faith, when we're being persecuted, that we need to hold tight to the word of God, Lord, knowing that Jesus came and suffered so that the grace and the blood that is over all of our sins. It covers a multitude of sins. And God, we thank you for that, Lord. God, we thank you so much because you love us in spite of us, God, that we can't even, we can't pay enough. We can't be good enough in order, but you still sent your son to just to save us all, God. And so I pray that any person that is walking in life thinking that they're too bad or there's too much that they've done and there's too much that they've experienced, that they realize that you are waiting with your arms open, ready to receive us and to give us the love and the gift of salvation and eternal life, God, that we shall wear a crown, God, that we will get the victory, that you will be glorified as we surrender our will to your way, God. And so, Lord God, today I thank you. I pray that this teaching was a blessing, not because I did it, but because I was obedient to something that I was afraid of, God. I prayed and I prayed that someone was blessed by this teaching today, God, that they recognize that the same persecution that they feel right now and they're coming and they're going is nothing new, Lord. That's why you give us instruction in your word, God. And I pray that they will go back and they will read these letters and be encouraged and understand that one of the best things about Smyrna God is that it's still standing, God. It's still standing, Lord. Just like some of us, we've been year after year, we feel like we're beat down, tore down, but God, because of your faithfulness, we are still standing, God. And we know that your son has come to close the gap, to get us closer to you, God. And so Father God, in the name of Jesus today, I pray, Lord, that someone was blessed. I know I was by this word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And at this time, I'm going to transfer it over either to Pastor Carter, Jeff Carter, or Pastor Shannon Carter. Thank you so much. God bless y'all. Thank you, Latasha, um, for that lesson. I know it definitely spoke to me. And you all know I always say it's good for us to get the background and the research. Um, but you definitely gave me some points in how I can apply what was said to the church at Smyrna. Definitely um, apply to my life. And I'm grateful to God because I realized tonight just how rich I am in joy and in peace. And despite persecution, I bless God for his richness. We want to continue to keep our pastor in prayer um, as he is traveling. And um, I just wanted to say, I appreciate even when you brought up at the end and saying, you know, that there, if there is anyone watching, because this is going out on Facebook and, and um, 
sometimes we load to YouTube as well. So if there is anyone that should see this and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, or you cannot say that you know definitely where you will be and that you will not experience that second death. The reason that we do this, yes, is to encourage each other, but we are a church of evangelism. And so if you would like someone to pray with you, if you want to say, I'm not positive that I'm going to make it in the end, we want to make sure that we offer you that opportunity. And so even now, it does not matter when you watch this, the Bible says in the book of Romans that if you would confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And all you have to do is believe that God is a God that sent his son, Jesus. He loved you so very much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, just to die on Calvary's cross for you. And if you would believe that and accept him in your heart, and confess with your mouth. The Bible says that that's all it takes and you will be saved and you can have that eternal life that we have talked about. You can be saved from that second death that was talked about on tonight. You can email us at ephesusinfo at gmail.com. You can also get more information, not only about our services, but we do have videos and uh, Bible teachings, you can go to www.ephesusministries.org um, and we would love to hear from you. You can also send your prayer requests. So thank you again, Latasha. Thank you everyone who has logged on and been so faithful in prayer and in Bible study. And we will see you all again. We'll be in prayer tomorrow night at 630 and we'll see you all in person in church on Sunday. I love you all. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. God bless. Good night. Love you all. Good night, everybody. Love you all. Good night, everybody. Love you all. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. God bless you all. Good night, everybody. I love you all. <laughs>